All right, the next section is 1.3, exponents and polynomials. So first we're going to talk about the parts of an exponent. And when I talk about the parts of an exponent, I like to actually show you an exponent. So let's say 2 and a little bitty 5. This 2 is called the base of an exponent. And this little bitty 5 is the exponent or power. And I would actually read that as 2 to the 5th power. So um, below we have a couple of different evaluated expression kind of things. And what they're actually doing is they are showing you the exponent and then showing you in the brackets how it's read. So I have 4 with a little 2. So 4 to the 2nd power or 4 squared. There are two different exponents that have special names, and it's the 2 and the 3. And when you see to the second power, you might see it written as to the second power, or you can see it written as squared. So what does an exponent mean? Well, if I have an exponent, that means that number times itself however many times this number or the power occurs. So that means 4 times itself twice. This up here would have been two times itself five times. One, two, three, four, five. So that's what an exponent means. It means I'm going to multiply the base times itself however many times your exponent tells it to. Now to evaluate this, you just multiply. So four times four is 16, and that's your answer. Now let's look at our next example. Two to the third power. So I can re write this as 2 to the 3rd, and notice that on your paper it's to the 4th, so you can change that. It's a little error. Um, 2 to the 3rd power or 2 cubed. So when you have to the 2nd power, the special name is squared. When you have to the 3rd power, the special name is cubed. These are the only two powers that have special names. Okay, so to the 2nd power is squared, and to the 3rd power is cubed. So let's write this in um, expanded form. So I'm going to have 2 times itself 3 times. So 2 times 2 times 2. Now if this makes um, you nervous when you have a lot of numbers multiplied, just multiply them 2 at a time. So I have 2 times 2 is 4. Then I bring down my next 2 and multiply 4 times 2 is 8. So this is not um, hard stuff. Just if it does look a, a little bit harder than what you're used to, just look at them a little bit at a time. And that's what I try to tell my students. Make a difficult problem easier by simplifying it, looking at piece by piece. Now let's look at our next example. We have four, I mean one to the fourth power. So this is one times one times one times one. Well, anything, when you have a one times itself any amount of times, that's still going to be just one. There's nothing to really do there. That one's pretty easy. 1 to the 15th power will still be 1. So 1 to any power is actually going to be 1. Now the next one is 6 to the 1st. That means I'm going to multiply 6 times itself one time. Well, I only wrote it down one time, and there's nothing to multiply. So 6 to the 1st power is just like having 6. Now let's look at the one that everyone dreads, the fraction. The fraction is not hard. I'm going to write that fraction times itself two times. So 3 over 5 times 3 over 5. Now, a little further down, I will show you how to cross cancel at an angle. That means if I had a number that would go into both 3 and 5, I could reduce it and it would make my um, multiplying easier and I wouldn't have to reduce at the end. That's a trick when you multiply fractions, and I'm going to let you know. Um, but in this one, there's nothing I can reduce. So when there's nothing to reduce, you multiply the numerators to the numerators, the denominators to the denominators. So 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 5 is 25. And this is in simplest form. How do I know it's in simplest form? Well, because I couldn't cross cancel. And so since I couldn't cross cancel a 3 and a 5, that means there's nothing to reduce. Let's go on and look at the order of operations. The order of operations is something that you've probably heard of, um, and it's, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, adding and subtracting. Um, this is a really easy way to remember what comes first. Is this saying here, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and 
let's go ahead and really it's just telling you the order in which to work these problems. So you always want to look for parentheses, work within the parentheses first, and if you don't have things in the parentheses, then you go on to exponents. If there's not exponents, then you go on to multiplying and dividing and then from left to right, and then adding and subtracting from left to right. So let's work this first one. I don't have any parentheses, any grouping symbols. I don't have any exponents. So that means that I'm going to look for multiplying and dividing next. Well, I have a multiplication problem here and here. So you always want to work it from left to right. So I'm going to work the 12 times 5 first. So 12 times 5 is 60. If you need to do scratch work over to the side to get that, that's fine. I'm going to bring down my minus sign. And you can actually do 3 times 6 in this step here, or you can write it and do it in the next step. But 3 times 6 is 18. Now, now all I, there is left to do is to subtract. Now, I'm going to bring this up so you can see that borrowing step. So I'm going to say I'm going to have to borrow 1 from the 6, make it a 5, make that 0, a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. So my answer is 42. So I multiplied first on both, and then I subtracted. On this one, the second um, example, I do have grouping symbols. So that means that I'm going to work inside the parentheses first. I'm not even going to look at that 5. I'm only going to look at that 6 minus 2. So 6 minus 2 is 4. Keep your parentheses and bring down what we haven't worked. We haven't done anything with that 5, so I brought it down. So all I did in that step was 6 minus 2. Now the only thing that's left to do is to multiply. When you have parentheses with only one number in, in the middle of them, that's multiplication. So 5 times 4 is 20, and that's my answer. I'm going to pick up where I left off in my next video.